Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. You know, if you look up do-it-yourself rifling or homemade rifle barrel on YouTube, you'll find a lot of videos of very complex uh, setups and contraptions that various people have tried to use to make rifle barrels at home. Uh, I know Clinton Westwood has some videos out on his uh, homemade rifling machines and I've seen some other similar videos of equally complicated but probably less effective methods. Um, but the truth is that rifling a barrel at home really doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, and so today I'm going to show you my simple, effective uh, rifling method, and really I shouldn't call it mine because it's simply my do-it-yourself adaptation of the button rifling process, which is widely used in the firearms industry. Now, with the button rifling process, uh, they'll just take a little tungsten carbide die or button that has a mirror image of the rifling on it, and they'll drive it through a previously unrifled barrel, and the pressure cold works the imprint of the rifling into the steel uh, so that you end up with a rifled barrel. And so you don't need a lot of complex machinery. Uh, if you want to do it yourself, all you have to do is carve a rifling button, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. But before we can rifle our barrel, first we need to make the barrel that we're going to rifle. And for that, we'll need a piece of steel. Um, you could start with an ordinary piece of round bar stock, but I'm actually going to start with this uh, 7 8 14 grade 8 bolt. Now there's a couple of advantages to starting with a bolt versus a piece of bar stock. Um, one being that I plan to eventually thread this into a receiver, and so already having the threads on the bolt saves me a threading operation. Uh, secondly, bolts are graded according to tensile strength. And so with a grade 5 or grade 8 bolt, you're going to have a steel that already has a lot better tensile strength than uh, a common piece of mild steel round bar or uh, even an alloy steel bar that's in its annealed condition. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, this bolt is actually a little bit longer than the barrel that I want to make, so I'm going to start by cutting a little bit off the end and then also cutting the head off the bolt. So now that I've got this cut down to size, I need to drill out the bore. And by far the easiest way to do this and keep it centered is on a metalworking lathe. But you don't necessarily need a lathe in order to drill a hole through a piece of bar stock. And so just to prove it can be done, I'm going to use this uh, bench top drill press that I bought from Harbor Freight Tools for $40 15-odd years ago. And I'm actually going to start by drilling a hole in this block of wood that's about the same as the outer diameter of the barrel, and then I can put this barrel in the block, and that will constrain it in a vertical orientation that's kind of automatically aligned with the axis of the drill press. And hopefully that will help me get the bore as straight as possible uh, in this barrel. centered in the barrel, but it's pretty close, especially for something done on a cheap drill press, so I think it'll be serviceable. Uh, next thing to do is going to be to drill out the chamber. Now, I'm planning on chambering this for 40 Smith & Wesson, which is a rimless case that headspaces on the mouth of the cartridge, so the chamber depth has to be pretty precise. Um, of course, the, the level of precision that we need would be 
almost trivially easy to hit using my lathe or my milling machine, but since I'm trying to demonstrate how you can do this using nothing more than a cheap drill press, I've just taken a drill bit and wrapped some electrical tape around it at the correct depth to serve as a temporary stop collar, and hopefully this will get us close enough for practical purposes. make sure I polish the chamber real good. Uh, it probably doesn't matter whether I do that before or after cutting the rifling, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do it before. So now that we have drilled the bore and the chamber and smoothed everything up as best we can, it's time to make the rifling button. And for that, we will need two things, a piece of tool steel and a piece of paper. The tool steel could be a piece of drill rod, uh, could be a piece of a dr broken drill bit, uh, could be a hardened steel dowel pin. The key is it has to have just the right diameter to cold work the rifling into the steel as we drive it through the bore. And rarely will you find dowel pins or drill rods that are just the right size for that. Might get away with a drill bit depending on what caliber you're doing. Uh, of course, if you have a lathe, it's pretty easy to take a piece of drill rod and turn it down to whatever diameter you need. If you don't have a lathe, you can do the same thing on a drill press just by chucking up a short piece of rod in the drill press and then uh, turning it down with either an angle grinder or a hand file until it uh, gets down to the right diameter. Um, that is doable, it's not easy. It takes a lot of patience and self-discipline to get good results with that method, but it is available if you need it. Anyway, so this has to be precisely the right diameter. It's also a good idea to have some chamfers on the ends. The chamfers don't have to be very precise. Those could easily be ground on a uh, bench grinder or whatever you've got available. Now, the piece of paper, what we'll want to do is draw a rectangle that is the same width as the circumference of this uh, rifling button and the same length as the rifling button itself. Then, we will draw angled lines across the rectangle at the angle that we want the rifling grooves to take. Um, so, you know, say you want a, a 1 in 16 or a 1 in 20 twist, you, you do your uh, trigonometry with the circumference of the uh, uh, bore and the length over which it makes one revolution. You can calculate your angle and then you, you know, you measure that off, or actually it's probably easier just to use the uh, rise over run, the slope of the line. But anyway, you draw your parallel lines uh, in a pattern spaced out across the rectangle, uh, and those will serve as guides for carving the mirror image of the rifling that we want. So, as we carve this down, uh, the lands on the button will become grooves in the barrel and vice versa. Now, you can obviously make this with as many lands and grooves of whatever shape as you want. Um, it might be interesting to experiment with some different rifling patterns, as I know various gun makers have. Uh, but for ease of running it through the barrel, I'm thinking I'm going to carve this down with just three narrow lands on the button, and then I can run it through a couple of times to get a multiple of three grooves in the barrel. Uh, and I haven't done this before, but I think that'll reduce the pressure or force that we have to apply to drive it through the barrel. Uh, and make this a little bit easier. So as far as drawing the uh, guidelines on the paper, you can certainly do that by hand with conventional drafting techniques, but I find it easier to do it in the computer, so I think I'm just going to draw this up in CAD, print it off, and then cut out that rectangle, glue it to the outside of the rifling button, uh, and then go to work grinding those grooves with an ordinary Dremel tool. So there is our completed rifling button. 
Now all we have to do is drive this through the barrel. I always like to smear a little bit of extreme pressure molly grease on the button before I ram it through the barrel. I don't know if it really helps that much, but it sure ain't gonna hurt anything. Now, you could probably drive the button through the barrel with a hammer if you had to, but using a hydraulic press gives you a lot more control. And if you don't have a hydraulic press, you can build one pretty easily out of some scrap metal and a hydraulic bottle jack that you can get for about $20 at Harbor Freight. So there's really no reason not to do this with a press. Well, when I drove that button through the barrel, it actually came out the other end in two pieces. I don't know how I managed to break it inside the barrel, but I guess I should have tempered that tool steel a little better. Anyway, it was probably longer than it needed to be to begin with, so what I'm just going to do is grind off this broken face and then run it through again to get another set of uh, grooves in the barrel. There we go. I suppose I should explain the stack up that I'm using here to drive the button through. Um, this base piece is just a hunk of aluminum that I made by melting down some scrap and pouring it into a tin can. And then what I've done here is I've drilled a hole about three quarters of the way through this block. All that is is so that when I push the button out the end of the barrel, it'll have some place to drop through and I'm not trying to push it into the you know, into the hydraulic ram or into a solid surface where it won't be able to come out. Uh, so that's all that that is. Uh, I milled out a little pocket to help center the, the barrel in that, but that of course is totally optional. Then of course we put the uh, button in like that, and then we'll need a ramrod of some sort on top of that. And these ramrods that I'm using are just pieces of uh, 3 8 inch 4140 alloy steel that I hardened for this purpose. Um, I, I've tried doing this with just mild steel, you know, cold roll or hot roll round stock, and sometimes that works, and sometimes it sort of bends and buckles more, so the, the alloy steel just makes that a little bit uh, easier, less to worry about. And then on top of that, I'm just taking, this is the head of the bolt that I cut off of here, and then I drilled a 3 8 hole about a sixteenth of an inch deep that that rod will kind of sit in and that just rides up against the uh, top of the hydraulic ram or the, rather the hydraulic press because the, the frame of the press is made out of relatively soft uh, scrap steel and I might actually push this rod through the side of the or through the top of the press if I didn't have something a little more substantial uh, backing it up. So, nothing terribly fancy here, just some repurposed scraps of metal that uh, come in handy for driving that button through. And there is our homemade button rifled barrel. Definitely not as smooth as a typical factory rifled barrel. Um, Particularly the first pass with the longer button, uh, it looks like maybe the button was sticking a little bit or even sort of cold welding to the steel and left some rough spots, particularly right there at the end. And then the, the second pass with the shorter button was a lot smoother. Um, but that barrel is definitely rifled. So at this point, all that remains is to take it out and test it. So I just threaded our homemade 40 s and barrel into my homemade Utah pistol and we'll take it out and test fire it. It looks a little short, but it's a three and a half inch barrel, which is pretty typical of 40 Smith & Wesson barrels in commercial handguns.
I'm not sure how well you can see this in the fading light, but uh, my first group was down here. Once I figured out where I was hitting, uh, this is the group that I was shooting. Um, Accuracy is not great. I'm sure I could tighten those groups down quite a bit if I took the time to put some sights on this thing and then took the time to line up those sights on the target. However, you will note that all of these are nice round holes. There's no keyholing going on, so the rifling is clearly doing its job. So that's about all there is to my uh, do-it-yourself button rifling process. Conceptually, it's pretty simple. Uh, it does require a certain amount of skill and precision or maybe luck and trial and error to uh, get everything to fit correctly so that it works out properly, but uh, as I demonstrated here, it's quite possible to build a very functional rifle barrel by this method without using any fancy machine tools. Um, you know, the most expensive piece of equipment that I used in making this barrel was that $40 benchtop Harbor Freight drill press. Uh, now that said, this process can certainly be tailored to whatever level of sophisticated machinery you may have available. If you've got a lathe, for example, you can bore this out on the lathe instead of on the drill press and get the bore centered uh, much more easily and much better than we did here. And of course, if I do this again, I will be doing it on the lathe. I only bore this on the drill press to prove it could be done. Uh, similarly, uh, now that I have a milling machine and a rotary table, I plan to set up a jig at some point to cut rifling buttons on the mill instead of having to carve them by hand with a Dremel. Uh, that'll give me much more uniform rifling on the button, and therefore much more uniform rifling in the barrel. Uh, and when I get around to doing that, I'll probably make a separate video about it. But until then, thanks for watching the Idaho Show.